Hi, it's Cassie here again. I decided to use my webcam for another update. Don't know how this is going to go, so we'll see. Um, I am about a month post surgery now. It's Saturday, the 8th of August. I had my operation on the Friday, 10th of July. I'm doing pretty good. I've lost about 12 kilos so far. Surgery was a lot worse than I thought it was going to be, and I was led to believe. Um, I woke up after the surgery in immense pain. I felt like somebody had planted an elephant on my stomach and just left it there. Um, they hadn't set up my caffeine drip yet, which was lovely of them, so I woke up with absolutely no pain relief. Um, that was quite painful. <laughs> they took me back to my room and they said that I should be able to drive myself home within two days. Um, yeah, I was in there from Friday to Monday. I was throwing up, had a re bad reaction to the anaesthetic and the painkillers. Um, yeah, just was not doing well and it was very painful. Um, it still hurts a little to breathe in deeply. It's not even hurting really, I should say. It's discomfort. It's like my diaphragm's being irritated by the implant, but everything else is fine. I don't feel the implant anymore. I did at first. It made me feel kind of sloshy, like when you've gone for some exercise or something and you drink a whole litre of water because you're really thirsty. And then you kind of do your stomach sloshing around a bit. I felt like that for about the first week then that settled down. Um, I've noticed in the past few days that I've been able to eat twice as much as I could before, which is still a whole lot less than what I used to be able to eat before the balloon, but um, for about the past three or four weeks I'm going to be able to eat maybe four or five tablespoons worth of food at a time. Um, drinking at the same time as eating is not a good idea. Um, it makes me very uncomfortable because it swells up my stomach and then the balloon presses on everything and it hurts. So, yeah, you learn pretty quickly not to overeat. And you have to eat slowly so that your brain can get the message that your stomach's full. So I've had, had to do that. But now I can fit in probably about 10 tablespoons worth of food, which is probably still half of what I used to eat. But I've gotten used to only eating that four or five tablespoons worth of food. So I'm going to have to go back to the doctor and get some more saline put in my balloon, I think. I think it's probably just because my swelling probably finally gone down and it's healing properly and settling into place nicely and that's good but yeah I'm going to need some more fluid in my implant I have I think between 850 and 950 mils now I'm not sure exactly I'm sure they'll tell me when they do the fill how much I'll have um I can't think of anything else I've seen the psychologist and the dietitian a few times well psychologist once dietitian twice um to go from I had two weeks worth of fluid foods only which was protein shakes and fruit juices, um, liquid vitamins and stuff, which was just terrible and disgusting. Um, then after those two weeks, I had two weeks of pureed foods, which I just basically did soft foods like casseroles and custards and puddings and things that were just, you know, soft foods. I couldn't really puree everything. It was driving me insane. I pureed fruits, things like that. And now I'm back onto full textured foods where I'm supposed to be introducing, you know, of textured foods, whereas I've just kind of been doing that for the past week. Shouldn't have, but I felt like the food, I tried it, I was fine. So they've kind of lumped us in with the banding people, the lap banding, and given us the same guidelines as they have, which I don't think is very fair because it's a completely different procedure. With a lap band, you have a tiny pocket created at the top of your stomach with a, like a minuscule hole for food to fall through. So you kind of need to have that you know, pureed foods for longer and things like that. Whereas with the balloon people, our stomach's exactly the same as it was before. It's just got pressure put on it so it can't fit as much in. So I don't believe we really need to be on it for so long. Maybe fluids for two weeks, then purees for a week, or fluids for a week and a half, purees for a week, and then back on full textured foods. Because, yeah, I don't, haven't had any problems and I've been eating full textured foods for about two weeks now. So, yeah, I think it's just trial and error because I don't know what they're doing. They don't know what to expect. Um, the three people that were done on the Friday, the 10th, was me, another um, guy, I won't give you his name, but I'll give you his initial, which is M, and a good friend of mine who I've now made um, went after me. Her name starts with S. Um, we've since heard that M has had to have his implant repositioned, I believe it was. Um, they don't know why it happened but it moved and he had to have it repositioned um, S had a bit of trouble with her surgery um, 
the way that they put the implant in is there's a special gum that releases the implant with sutures and everything. Um, the first two attempts at putting that in, the gum wouldn't release from the implants. They had to pull it out and try again. And at that point, apparently, the Americans said, um, no, close her up, we don't want to do it anymore. But um, Dr. Layani fought for her and said, no, we can do it, we can still do it, I'll do it, I'll put it in myself. So he stitched in hers by himself and filled it to the maximum capacity, which is 1.25 litres. So she has the biggest implant of all of us because hers is filled to the maximum. Um, she then got an infection because she had to be opened up a few more times. Um, and she's just gotten out of hospital about, I think it was a week ago, um, from a second lot of surgeries to fix up the infection. So she's not doing so well. But um, eventually she'll come good and then we'll be both exercising together, hopefully, that's the plan, um, and losing weight together. She's lost a little bit more than I have at the moment, but that's mainly, I think, because she's got the bigger implant and she's been ho in hospital. So she hasn't really had access to the kinds of foods I have. Um, she's been on, you know, hospital pureed foods and whatnot. I can't think of what else to do, what to say for an update. Um, things are going good. I'm getting around fine. I'm not sore most of the time. Only if I stuff myself too full and I'm trying to, you know, bend over and things, it's quite restricting. Like if you go out to an all-you-can-eat buffet and you literally fill yourself, fill yourself as full as you can go. That's what I feel like after only, you know, a couple of tablespoons worth of food. Well, a couple of days ago, but yeah, and it's just quite restricting and it takes maybe an hour or two for the feeling to kind of go down. But um, what I've been doing lately is just drinking a lot of fluids like water and stuff to fill myself up and kind of try and stop feeling as hungry. Because I think it's my head telling me, like, normally you're eating now, you should be eating. And I'm like, no, I can't eat, I'm not hungry. So it's that head hunger that I'm having to get over. So yeah, I just drink some water and then half an hour later if my stomach starts telling me I'm hungry, um, I'll go and eat. It doesn't really rumble anymore. It kind of spasms and gives a little kind of quiver. I don't know if it can rumble anymore, but um, yeah, it kind of cramps up and spasms and that's when I know I'm hungry. It hurts quite a bit actually. And if I go past meal times, because I'm having to have myself set at meal times, I have you know six meals a day. I have breakfast, morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea, dinner, and then supper. And if I skip those meal times by more than half an hour or so, then I eat too quickly because I'm really hungry and then my brain doesn't get the message fast enough and then I'm in a lot of discomfort and pain. So I'm having to learn to eat at certain times and have a certain amount, eat it slowly, enjoy it, and then, yeah, just wait and see how things go. Um, I would show you guys my incision, but I'm not sure anyone really wants to see it. So I'll try and find some way to take a photo of it and post it maybe or add it into this video some way. Um, I won't give you the pictures of it when it first happened because it was a bit oozy and gooey. But now it's looking pretty good. It's bright red, but that's to be expected. But I didn't stitch me or staple me. It was just skin glue. So I've got, you know, a smaller scar than I would have if that was stitching me. Um, I didn't think of anything else to say. I'm doing well. I'll give you guys another update when there's more to say, I guess. Alright, bye.